Rejoice again, I say rejoice. Good morning, I'm Rev Bev, and I'm coming to you this morning from the sanctuary of St. Andrew Presbyterian Church. We are not in the sanctuary this morning. We are Roman with the Romans. As we have been talking about this summer series, I've mentioned that the live worship will take place in a few other locations. Today it is in Fellowship Hall. And so this is a pre-recorded uh, reading of the scripture and a few words about the meaning of the text this day for our purposes. So I invite you to still your hearts, to prepare your way into worship. We'll take just a moment of silence. I'll offer a prayer for illumination, and then I'll be reading the scripture of Romans chapter 4, verses 13 through 25. But I'll be reading a different version. I'll be reading from the message by Eugene Peterson. This is not a translation, but it's his interpretation from the original languages and today's use of the English language. Let us listen for God's voice. O Holy Lord, we rejoice in your presence wherever we are and ask that you still all other voices but your own in the sounds of nature and in the reading and hearing of your word and in the gathering of these people across the virtual world. May we hear your spirit speaking to us for this day. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us listen now in the word of God. That famous promise that God gave Abraham that he and his children would possess the earth was not given because of something Abraham did or would do. It was based on God's decision to put everything together for him, which Abraham then entered when he believed. Belief. Those who get what God gives them only by doing everything they are told to do, like filling out all the right forms properly signed, that eliminates personal trust completely and turns the promise into nothing but an ironclad contract. That's not a holy promise. That's just a business deal. A contract drawn up by a hard-nosed lawyer with plenty of fine print only makes sure that you will never be able to collect. But if there's no contract in the first place, simply a promise and God's promise at that you can't break it. That is why the fulfillment of God's promise depends entirely on trusting God and God's way and then simply embracing him and what he does. God's promise arrives for us as a gift. The only way that everyone can be sure to get in on it, those who keep the religious traditions and those who have never heard of them. And this is why we say that Abraham is the father of us all. He's not our racial father. That's reading the story backwards. He is our faith father. 
We call Abraham father, not because he got God's attention by living like a saint, but because God made something out of Abraham when he was a nobody. So Abraham was first named father and then became a father because he dared to trust God to do what only God could do. Raise the dead to life with a word. Make something out of nothing. When everything was hopeless, Abraham believed anyway, deciding to live not on the basis of what he saw he couldn't do, but on what God said he would do. But it's not just Abraham. It's for all of us. The same thing gets said about us when we embrace and believe the one who sent Jesus, who died and, and who brought Jesus to life when everything was hopeless. This sacrificed Jesus put everything together for us, set us right with God. That's a promise God keeps. Holy wisdom, holy word, thanks be to God. Friends, as I've studied this text this week, I found uh, three key points that I wanted to highlight. One, it is Father's Day weekend, and we talk about Abraham as a father. In this, rec in this um, message from Eugene Peterson, he says, not a racial father. So he's talking uh, to the Jews in this letter, the Jewish Christians in Rome. And he's distinguishing for them the way in which Abraham is the father of all who will believe and trust in God. The reason this was important is because the Jewish Christians were trying to make the Gentiles become Jews. They had to learn all about Judaism and they had to follow the law even become circumcised. But Paul is teaching them that you don't have to become a Jew first any more than Abraham had to be a father already to believe that God's word would be kept. He could not have known whether that meant he would really have children. After all, Abraham and Sarah were both old and way, way past the age of being able to have children. Nevertheless, Abraham trusted God. And so Abraham is our faith father. Think about who you have experienced as a father or a father figure. What are the things that make a father good. And how does that person share spiritual truths with you and teach you what it means to believe in something or someone bigger than yourself? The next thing I realized is this idea of keeping the law that Paul is addressing has to do with the way we put in place something just in case the promise doesn't come true. All the things we do to say, but I did right. I honored you. I showed up on Sundays. I honored my father and mother even when they didn't deserve it. Some of us can talk about those kinds of things and wonder why do bad things happen to good people? Especially when we are doing all the works of the law. 
as the Jews were trying to convince their Gentile, com, the new Gentile converts to do the same. So Paul is talking throughout this early part of the book of Romans that our salvation is not based in anything we do. And even when life seems over for us, God is still working out the promise for us to have new life, abundant life. The promise to Abraham that he would have children and be a father to nations was important to him because for the Jews at that time who did not believe there was such a thing as resurrection, the only way they continued to live, to have new life generation after generation, was to go on through their children, through their heirs, for their name to be carried forward. And therefore, the promise to Abraham was about his life after his life. Paul says, but this promise that is for us is ours in Jesus Christ, whom God raised from the dead. Just as Abraham received a life-giving promise when he was as good as dead, Jesus shows us that we receive the promise of new life that even if we die, we will live. And this is good news because the, the sin that holds us captive to the fear of death has no power when we believe in the promise of an everlasting life through an eternal God who has power over death. May you find in reading this section of Romans and considering the story of Abraham that indeed God is making new promises for new life to you each and every day. No matter how hopeless it seems, God is at work to open the way. May it be so for you, and may your faith be reckoned to you as righteousness. Let us pray. God of life, who teaches us that nothing in death or in life can separate us from your love in Jesus Christ, help us to believe in your promise this day and evermore. For your glory. In the name of Jesus and by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, may you go into this week with the hope of the Holy Spirit, our life giver, with the promise of new life that is ours in Jesus Christ, and with the love and promises of God, the grace of God, the love of Christ, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, now and forevermore. Amen.